Well, welcome back. We are going to start the uh, Human Resources frame. Uh, this will be the first of eight videos looking at this particular frame and trying to adjudicate, if you will, are, are people a necessary evil uh, of running a company or are people the most valuable resource of a company? Very cool. So, lots of stuff to uh, cover. This particular video is going to look at the lesson objectives from the book that uh, uh, we're going to cover over the uh, next eight uh, videos. And then it's also going to look at some of the key terms uh, associated with the uh, human resource frame. So let's get right into it. So we're going to start off, as, as we do with all of these uh, frames, by looking at the core assumptions associated uh, with that uh, perspective. Uh, we'll then start to uh, dig in a little bit more some of the foundational work, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y, and Argyros's uh, Theory of Organization Person Fit. Uh, so once we have that foundation, then we can just start, uh, we'll start to talk about how do we uh, 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 handle people within the organization? Do we take a lean and mean approach uh, to people? Or do we invest in people, uh, treating them as our uh, most precious resource? That will cover one of the chapters from the book. We'll then move into uh, looking at six uh, human resource strategies that organizations are going to use uh, to uh, invest in their employees. And that's actually going to take a bit of time because we're going to go through common methods for implementing uh, each of those uh, different strategies. And then we'll finish up this chapter by looking at the field of uh, organizational development and have at least a couple of slides and, and some uh, supporting material around organizational development. That'll finish up the next chapter within the book. And then we head over to look at interpersonal dynamics within the workplace and start looking at theories of action and, and emotional intelligence. How does that come into play in terms of um, human resources in an organization? Finally, we'll, we'll spend some time looking at some popular uh, assessments of managerial style and uh, from there uh, go into group dynamics and so we'll talk about you know informal roles and norms and networks and conflict and decision making uh, within a group so lots and lots to cover in the uh, kind of three chapters that are dealing with the uh, human resource frame from here there are a number of key terms that you need to be aware of uh, as we're uh, progressing uh, through uh, these frames we'll start off with uh, the idea of self-actualization, uh, which relates to the development of one's full potential. We'll talk about Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, has a lot of press uh, around this and tends to make or uh, have some degree of uh, uh, a sense when people look at it for the first time, you know, face validity, if you will, uh, that uh, this hierarchy kind of makes some sense. There's some challenges with it too, but but for the most part, accepted. Uh, we'll get into theory X and Y. McGregor, you know, starts off with you know our subordinates passive and lazy with little ambition. That's theory X, or our people. Uh, theory why employees are would prefer to do a good job if they were given the authority to direct themselves and empowered uh, so that they could be uh, successful within their uh, role. Some more uh, terms here. These relate to uh, giving employees a uh, share, if you will, in the company, either through gain sharing, profit sharing, or a stock ownership plan, and then what the benefit and uh, uh, disadvantages uh, associated with each of these uh, three approaches. And from there we'll talk a little bit about open book management um, as, as a key term and this is one where every employee understands the kind of financial underpinnings and the performance measures that are going to be able uh, or that are going to be used within the uh, company. So the idea behind this is to provide the right information to everyone uh, so that the decisions of senior leadership are much more transparent and understood uh, because everyone's working off the same set of facts and everyone has a stake in the company's financial success. 
Um, we'll then talk about uh, participation and motivator. And on the other side, we'll go back and talk about hygiene factors, things that are negative uh, associated with a uh, particular um, organization and how it runs. Let's talk about, uh, then we'll move into job um, enrichment and total quality management. Boy, that's, that could that'd take several uh, presentations just by itself. Uh, but you can see the uh, ideas here, the changing jobs uh, to give workers more freedom and authority, more feedback, greater challenges, but also holding them accountable and using them, letting them use greater and greater skills within their job. Um, then we'll look at some sensitivity training, to group, organizational development. Again, organizational development, spend a lot of time there if we want to, but we're going to we'll skim the surface, skim, make you at least where you're dangerous, understanding um, how to develop organizations. Uh, from there, we'll start getting into uh, emotional uh, intelligence, uh, espouse theory, and a theory in use. And uh, again, these are pretty straightforward uh, once we get to them. Should not cause too many challenges. Um, this is the kind of parallel to uh, theory X and theory Y. We have model one and model two uh, where we're looking at organizations and how organizations interact. So are organizations these dangerous and competitive uh, places or are organizations uh, more structural, where you can emphasize common goals and mutual influence and communicate openly about what you're trying to do. Uh, so it should be a great conversation that sets the stage actually for the political frame once we get there uh, in a lesson or two. All right, and then we get into a, some emotional intelligence and talk about uh, this uh, concept of consideration of initiating structure uh, and of group norms and how those influence a particular organization. Wow, pretty impressive. We've actually covered uh, a large number of key terms and a large number of lesson objectives in about seven minutes. Not too bad. All right, well, next lesson. Oh, one more slide, one more slide. So remember the fundamental question. You know, are, are, when you look at human resources, uh, is human resources a perspective by which people are the most important asset? Or is human resources um, uh, something to be leveraged to gain competitive advantage compared to other companies? And uh, we've got two examples of those there. Uh, Nucor, where uh, people are their most precious resource, and Apple, uh, who takes a, um, a different approach to how they treat their employees to gain competitive advantage in the, uh, in, in the world. All right, very good. Well, this finishes up the first of eight videos. Next uh, video, we're going to get into the uh, assumptions that underlie the human frame, and then from there, get into a hierarchy of needs and human needs and uh, nature and nurture discussions and all sorts of cool things. So thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.